Hey guys, this is Trace with D News, and I'm talking to Dr. Joe Levine, who is a biology textbook author, a scientist, and an educator who took some NASA information and worked with the After Earth crew to talk a little bit about what happened to Earth prior to this movie that caused all the humans to have to leave. So tell me a little bit about um, how you see humanity affecting Earth and you know what nature is kind of prepared to do about it outside of the silver screen. What's important is that we as a human global society should be going through a real change in our understanding and perception of our relationship with the Earth because the influence of people on the planet has grown so much. The backstory of the film is that sometime in this century, humans screwed up the planet badly enough that the biosphere collapsed and essentially kicked us out. We are not just passengers on Spaceship Earth anymore. What I would say is that we should really think about changing the whole way that we look at the relationship between people on the planet because we are now the single greatest source of change on planet Earth. To bring it back to the movie a little bit, do you see that if Earth were to be humanless, would, what, would things change more rapidly? It is science fiction. Not an awful lot happens in the evolution of big animals over a thousand years. Right. What they were essentially hypothesizing as a backstory was some kind of mass extinction. And if you look at the fossil record and you see what happened after mass extinctions, you saw that each time life on Earth took a distinctly different yeah. path. We are literally covering most of the land surface of Earth. We have either used or altered most of the land on the planet. But there are lots of other things we're doing too. We're carrying species all over the planet that go wild and become invasive and wipe out local species. We're cutting down forests. We're changing prairies into farmland all over the place. And there are somewhere between five and a dozen different things we're doing that all together combine to impact the biosphere in important ways. The, what's the, the value then um of getting kids excited about this, you know, especially climate science it takes up so much time and so many, you know, so many generations. It might not affect anyone until their children's 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 children's. I've been around for a while and I'm a scientist and I've spent my life looking at maps with arrows and stuff on them. And I have to say that the first time I saw some of those NASA Goddard visuals, I was awestruck. You know, I sometimes talk to kids about about the Lion King or Pocahontas style ecology, you know, balance of nature, everything's sweet, and you get the right folks yeah. in charge, and the ecosystem automatically straightens itself out. You know, that's not real. There isn't really a balance of nature. There is ecosystems don't try to heal themselves. Intact, functioning ecosystems with all the plants and all the animals and all the viruses and all the bacteria and everything else that normally live in those systems do a whole bunch of stuff for us. If we start chopping these ecosystems up into pieces that are too small, stressing them a little bit with climate change, and a little bit with nitrogen, and a little bit with invasive species, and a little bit with something else, these kinds of services are gonna decline. We did a video a while ago about bees and about you know colony collapse and whatnot, and how it's not just one thing, it's a lot of different things that are contributing. If you could outline briefly maybe one or two ways that somebody could take some action in this area? Yeah, you have to tell elected officials that you care about it. I think it may be because a lot of us live in cities where we are in fact fairly insulated from nature and we don't think about where food and water comes from a tap. And uh, one teacher actually told me that one of her students' parents called her to task for telling their kids a lie about where milk came from. Because she was telling them that milk came from cows and the mom said, no, milk comes from cartons. You get it in the supermarket. So, you know, a lot of people are pretty far removed from the way things work. And that's one of the reasons we're trying to do this kind of outreach. Here's a link to Joe's lesson plans right here. And make sure that you check out After Earth as well so you know what happens if we don't follow his advice. And subscribe to DNews for more videos. Thanks for watching.